I'm Svet Wilmot, director of the Natural History Consortium that puts on the Festival of Nature each year. Now, if you're local, you'll know that we are in the center of Bristol. The cathedral bells are ringing, the construction noise is loud, and there's lots of people here having their lunch on College Green. Um, I can also see a beautiful rewilding uh, wildflower meadow that's come into the center of the city. Now, you might not know that the Festival of Nature uh, grew up here in Bristol. We've been running for 19 years, but of course we can't run events this year, so we're creating a whole week of digital content uh, online and on audio to help you find out some nature stories. Now, we're not the only big nature organization that's based here in Bristol, and I'm really glad to welcome Paul, who is editor of BBC Wildlife magazine, which is also based here in Bristol. It is, just around the corner, in fact. It took me about three minutes to get here. Fantastic. So how long have you been at BBC Wildlife magazine? Well, I've been with BBC Wildlife for just coming up for two years, actually. Um, but I've been working at Immediate Media, who publishes uh, BBC Wildlife. I've been there for about nearly 20 years under different names and different organisations. So, um, but I've been with uh, BBC Wildlife for about two years and it's, you know, it's, it's an absolute pleasure. It's, you know, my dream job. Is it? It's your dream job. So, you know, what's your nature story, Paul? What are your, some of your favourite places or wildlife to go out spotting? Um, my garden is my number one place for wildlife. We've just moved house. We moved house last year. Don't move house during a pandemic is my advice. Um, we moved and we got this garden, uh, not a big garden, but it's, and, and it was all, one side of it was just plastic grass and the other side of it was paving. So we've ripped it all up and we put in a load of beds and we put in all sorts of uh, you know, pots and trees and things like that in there. And now it's all just starting to bloom and now that the sun's finally come out after a very wet May, everything's starting to grow up. And so we're seeing the wildlife coming into the garden already, um, having, you know, been so barren for you know, before we moved in and it's great sort of going out and seeing mason bees buzzing around the fence and um, you know just seeing I think that's my number one place and it's great as well with my, my son uh, who's seven we go out there together and have a look and see what what's there I mean it's even just putting out a paddling pool last year we started getting frogs coming in the garden so now that we've done all this I can't wait to see what happens um, further afield in the garden. I grew up in North Devon, just on the edge of Exmoor, and it's just absolutely, for me, it's the most beautiful part of England because you have such a variety. You have at Exmoor, you have the beaches, the great coastline. Um, and so I, I grew up sort of in the rock pools, seeing what we could find, you know, there with our buckets and spades. And now when I take my son down there and we go to visit the grandparents, um, and we get the nets and we get, we get the buckets and go and see what we can find in starfish and jellyfish and crabs and you know all the wonderful nature that you find in the uh, in the rock pools. I think that's probably yeah. I mean, I've, I've been to some wonderful places around the world and seen some spectacular nature, but I don't think I don't think anything quite compares in terms of really getting to know um, wildlife. Not really compares to just the garden or the beach or somewhere, you know, the woods, somewhere that people are familiar with. You can see how it changes throughout the seasons and um, over the course of years, how you know, different species come and go. So yeah, fantastic. I love that idea, but there's so much close to home, you know, that we can we can find. So, so you've got your garden and your dream job. Um, so tell us a bit about what it what it means to be a newspaper or magazine editor. Are you are you choosing the stories? Are you deciding what order they go in? How does that work? Absolutely, yeah. Right from the, the you know, I have a great editorial team that we work with um, on a daily basis. We have other great teams advertising and marketing and publishing and all sorts of um, you know other teams. But within the editorial team, we decide what's going to go in the magazine. Um, and it, I should point out as well that it's not just a magazine these days. You know, we think of, we don't think of BBC Wildlife magazine. We think of the brand BBC Wildlife because we're making videos on YouTube. You know, we've got great photography, uh, wildlife photography masterclass on YouTube at the moment. Um, we're doing podcasts and we've got a huge Cut. amount of traffic on our website. So as a team, we decide what we think needs to go in, um, what stories we want to tell, and then how do we want them? Do we want them in a magazine? Do we want them, uh, are they best served 
digitally, you know, how, how are we going to engage with the audiences? Um, and yeah, we just, we have great fun doing that, sitting there, we, we have, you know, journalists and photographers constantly pitching us ideas, um, and we just sort of sit around and pick it all apart and say, oh, this sounds interesting, I wonder whether we could find out a bit more about that, and so we're spending our time reading, um, watching things on, on the internet, um, going out and about when we're when we're allowed to again, meeting people who work in the field, meeting photographers and filmmakers, finding out what all the great stories are, all the great things that happen all around the world, and then we pick our favourites, and then we package it all up and send it off to print or publish it digitally, um, and we get to do that day after day. So it's so, you know, it is it's a great dream fun. Job, isn't it, it is, it's an yeah. absolute dream job. Now. Uh, today is all about nature writing. We've mm -hmm. got all kinds of content about nature writing. Um, you know, so for some of the pros out there, for some of the young people who might want to get into the industry, you know, what makes a great nature story? What really kind of gets you interested or makes you kind of think, oh, this is this is a must publish. The thing, so I come from I come from a journalism background, a magazine journalist. I've worked on history magazines, I've worked on science magazines, all sorts of brands, music magazines. Um, and I think the same thing applies right across the board, and it's stories. People love huh. stories. So if you can tell a story that en engages you, if, you, if you're engaged in it, you're passionate about it, and then you can, you can tell that story no matter what it is, you know, whether it's a conservation story, whether it's an animal behavior story, um, whatever it is, it's all about the story. So find where the narrative is. Um, people often, you know, we get emails, we must get, you know, ten, 10 emails a day I get from people, here I've got this great idea for a story, and, you know, if I'm getting 70 a week, I, I'd say probably 50 of those have got no real thought put into them, they just, hey, I'd really like to tell you a story about uh, somewhere near where I live, I think it'd be great, and that's, you know, that's as far as it goes, you know, which is which is fine and has its place, um, but for us, what we're looking for is that narrative. Where, why are we telling this story? Why are we telling this story? Why are we telling this story now? Um, all of those sorts of things you have to think about. Um, so, doesn't there isn't a? Oh, I really want a story about um, red squirrels. Or, I mean, there is that. But really, if you're thinking about what you want to, you know, if you if you've got a story to tell. That's the, the, the that's the thing, really. That's all there is to it. It's just telling stories, really. Fantastic. Well, one more question for you, Paul. Um, you know, you're, you're clearly really passionate about magazines, and I think this summer that we all like to spend some time outside with our BBC Wildlife magazine, and I know you've got all these fantastic channels to back that up. I mean, how is the magazine industry changing? Is there still an appetite for people wanting to sit down with paper and flip through a magazine? What are you seeing? There really is, yeah. I mean. It's not like it was 20 years ago uh, when I, you know, when I started working in magazines sort of 20, 25 years ago. Magazines were huge. Everybody was reading magazines because there wasn't really this whole digital world. Um, and so there was a there was a period in magazines I don't know from maybe about the, the turn of the millennium where it just sort of seemed to go down and down and down and down. And there was an awful lot of doom and gloom. And I was thinking, why have I got into this industry now? Um, but then it sort of leveled off. And what we've seen is a lot of the sort of the more general magazines haven't survived, haven't done so well, but specialist interest magazines have thrived. Um, you know, we, we see our subscribers, just our subscriber list goes up year on year. People, you see that right across the board as a company, because um, we publish, you know, a hundred different magazines. Um, and there's just a huge appetite because what you can't get from any other medium is this, you know, th this lovely moment that fuels your passion where you take your magazine, you can take it anywhere, I could sit down here with it, I could take it on a bus or a train, I can, yeah. you know, take it anywhere, sit in the bath and read it. And it's your specialist interest, it's your passion, it's going to educate you and entertain you, it's going to inform you, it's going to inspire you. And you open it out and for us on BBC Wildlife, we have the best wildlife photographers in the world and we get to put their pictures that big, which you don't get on the internet, you don't get on your phone, um, and you can absolutely luxuriate in it, open it up, this big double page spread with inc 
incredible photography and you can just wallow in it and, uh, and, and then read about it and learn about it and turn the page and do it again. And you can't get that with anything else. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Paul. Now, if we whet your appetite for BBC Wildlife magazine, did you know that by filling in an evaluation form for this year's Festival of Nature, the festival's all free, we just really want to hear what you think, uh, you can get a special promo code to get this month's uh, version of BBC Wildlife magazine. So thank you very much for that, Paul. Our pleasure. Um, enjoy the rest of the content here on Nature Writing Day and across the festival week.